everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. It's been a couple of weeks since I've rolled out a Hylion uh, video here. This will be the last installment uh, on Hylion until I re-engage in my new location in New York City. And so uh, please be patient with the message. Uh, if you are with the message, uh, stick with us. Uh, if you're not, uh, subscribe to the message because I will re-engage this project. I think we are probably sitting on one of the greatest opportunities here um, that this uh, early decade uh, has provided in way of opportunity uh, with regard of uh, addressable market. And I think uh, Hylion is well positioned here to continue on their path to uh, electrifying the class eight commercial space. Now, if you are new to the Hylion opportunity, you need to kick over to the Hylion.com website. That'll give you the best tutorial uh, for information. The second best uh, location for uh, information is the, uh, the Discord group. Uh, it is uh, uh, reachable uh, most easily through, uh, through Facebook, uh, through the bullish uh, Hylion uh, stock owners um, uh, Facebook group. That is the best place to kick in there. Uh, so that information is out there. All you got to do is seek it out. But I, I do uh, double down on on this being an incredible opportunity. I, I wanna kick this video and talk uh, about is the stock bottoming here? Um, I, I think it's worth noting here the support that has been represented in the company uh, through this volatility. And I, I think there's a, a little bit of a phase of consolidation here um, with the stock at the time of filming this video at $3.50, I typically try to throw that out there uh, because it will be worth noting and reflecting back on on what um, either went wrong severely or really right uh, with this opportunity. And uh, for anybody who's been with me for quite some time, they know that um, I've been covering this story intimately. Uh, I, I really try to parse through uh, what is a lot of noise uh, on the landscape. I just read through another very scathing uh, article from Seeking Alpha, uh, a very reputable organization. I just think that, uh, you know, um, pundits and blog articles now can come on and uh, they can they can put their opinions online with uh, relative ease now, and I think uh, the importance is to review that information uh, with a scrutinizing lens and and make sure that you're um, uh, buying into what it is that uh, is is important to you and what you value. Um, this company has been on a slippery slope. There, there's no doubt about it. But I think going forward, I think we need to, as stock owners and or um, interested patrons in the space itself, as we look to transition uh, the, um, the, the trucking fleet, especially the class eight fleet into more of a green posture, um, I take a little bit more of a, of a um, multiple uh, solutions type of perspective. Um, and I believe Hylion is doing the same. I wish they would double down a little bit. What I mean by that is I, I believe the Hylion is the most uh, prepared to provide optionality to the fleets with regard to the fuel that they choose, whether it be CNG, um, RNG, a little bit further down the line, where those routes and availability for that said fuel uh, is is um, is available to those fleets. I believe that's going to be the most uh, beneficial uh, on the onset, uh, and then moving into more of a fuel agnostic type of application, um, where um, we can move into the potential of uh, of the beta testing. Um, the uh, viability of hydrogen fuel cell. I think Hylion is well positioned to benefit from that. Uh, and I believe that they will. But I think in retrospect, I think if we sit back as investors, the, the, the article, um, and I read both negative and positive articles, they don't bother me so much. Uh, I've already done my research. Uh, I am a share owner in the company. And again, I doubled and tripled down on this being probably the greatest opportunity here at $3.50. The irony in the whole thing is you have the majority of negative sentiment here with the stock as low as it's been over its history, but you had everybody and their mother uh, as the stock was going up from 30 to 40 to 50, even approaching $60 a share, jumping on the bandwagon. And there was nary a, uh, a, a warning out there to suggest maybe that the stock had overrun itself, that perhaps maybe it needed more time to get its footing. Uh, and you need to take that reverse uh, perspective on the stock market. Nobody is going to come out there and shake your ears for you and tell you, hey, you need to look at this opportunity at 350. I, I think it's, it's never been a better time to take a look at this company. 
um, it, it's provided us this kind of long exacerbated um, period of the shorts kind of rolling off. The short interest in the company is still at about 12%, which is fairly heavy. There's still enough people out there that believe that this company is not going to do um, what it suggests that it's going to do. And I, I think the roadmap uh, that they've laid out over the next couple of years clearly articulates what they're going to do. Now, in the meantime, I, I think it is going to be imperative upon people who are looking at this to focus on the future and not the past. And it just amazes me how would-be investors who profess to be investors always tend to look at past performance uh, as, as a judge or a gauge or a mechanism to judge potential future uh, performance. Now, if you're suggesting that the best times are behind Hylion, uh, I think you're probably taking um, a perspective. Hell, you could be right. I'm not in the business of saying who's right and wrong in this. But I think when we come up with a hypothesis and you are looking to determine the progress that's been made thus far uh, and evaluate the missteps, but let's be fair. I think you can come up with um, uh, some real key takeaways to understand how the OEMs are going to play a critical part in seeing Hylion's vision come up to mass scale and integration. And we folks are short 18 months away from that end. And um, I, I will absolutely be there. Uh, I will be covering the story. I think the real party begins at 18 months from now. So I do believe that we are in a phasing, uh, a phase of um, consolidation here. Uh, I believe with the market volatility, which, which certainly doesn't help, nobody wants to touch anything that has anything to do with new technology, speculation, everybody's flooding toward um, uh, safe haven stocks, and uh, everybody's talking about buying energy right here, which is insane to me. Uh, I was buying energy uh, three years ago. Um, when in, when the futures uh, went into the negative, uh, and you were being paid actually uh, for uh, for not owning <laughs> uh, Brent crude, um, I, I think it's insane to be talking about buying Exxon Mobil here at one hundred and ten dollars a share um, when I was actually buying it at thirty five dollars a share. But I, I don't know. It just goes to show my independent application um, is, is a far cry from the masses uh, and and the group think that's rampant. Um, I think something that we need to discuss here as of late as an update to the channel, and I'm going to make this a short video. I've had some criticism through the channel to suggest maybe that people don't appreciate the 60 minutes uh, of highly on content. I could talk for, for six hours on this topic with no problem. So I'm going to try to keep this a little bit short and sweet for the viewing audience here just as an update, but the Christensen fueling up in the great Northwest, um, that made uh, news, local news uh, on uh, channel 12 up there with regard to their excitement surrounding the hybrid product. I think those new wins, the wholesome order has just come through as of late and um, a, a few other pieces of, of, of information has trickled through uh, not only the Discord group, but those have been trickled through to Twitter uh, as well, uh, alluding to some new customer interest in the product. Um, is it fast enough? Uh, is it good enough? I, I, I don't know. I think it's a little premature to um, judge uh, whether or not the interest at this point, the early stages in the game are worth putting a whole lot of credence on um, with regard to how it's going to affect how the company unfolds itself over the next coming two years, three years, five, and, 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 and down the line. But I think it's, it's a, a far cry to deem it anything other than positive. Um, new customer interest in this product shows that the industry is looking for change. Now, Thomas Healy um, is really adamant about um, sharing his perspective about how um, incredibly um, hungry the industry is for this. Um, not so much indicated um, on you know them blowing down the doors at Hylion, but I don't I don't think they're blowing down the doors at any of these EV companies. I think they're waiting until that um, that uh, the real viability is there to be put into to good use. Um, and Hylion, as far ahead in the game as they are, there are still certifications and approvals that need to be met before they can say, "Look, we have an approved and ready to go product." Um, outside of the hybrid EX product, they are still working on rolling out their flagship 
product, which is the Hypertruck ERX. We've got the Innovation Council that's ready to take receipt of those test and demo units. I think that's going to provide a, a real tailwind for the company as well. In other words, if they're reporting uh, positive feedback from those uh, from those test uh, demo units, um, that that's not going to be able to keep a, a keep a secret in the industry. Um, uh, those those renderings are going to be uh, extremely positive for the company, and I'm I'm standing by patiently to to see those. So. We'll continue to monitor the customer interest going forward. I thought that was a nice piece of news that trickled through. Stock is kind of holding here. Everybody's calling for a re-downtrend of the company. Um, I, I don't I don't think that's um I, I think I've watched the stock action now for two and a half years on Hylion. And um, you know, is it possible for the stock to ever go up? I, I, I think people have been beat down so much with this that um, this has been an atrocious ride. It's been absolutely horrendous. And, and I think it, the hunger is, is demonstrated by uh, the pictures that were released about, you know, some of the renderings from maybe some of the new customers that Hylion has been looking to uh, engage with and build their fleet out. But, you know, Hylion's doing great work. They're progressing and they're progressing at the speed that they feel is applicable and appropriate for the company. And I, I just want to close with this simple summary on this, this company and this opportunity. I, I think sometimes the opinions, both on the positive and negative side of the house, really kind of, they kind of adopt way too much opinionated rhetoric when we're talking about the simplistic message and the simplistic solution that Hylion is rolling out here, okay? We currently have in this country and in North America abroad, a dependence upon fossil fuel that is undeniable, okay? So in summary, we wanna look at companies like Hylion, and if you're interested in it from an investor's perspective, this is the lens that you have to look at this opportunity in. Those fleets are looking to become less dependent on that fossil fuel uh, dominated past as we step into the future. So the question becomes, who are those solutions going to be out there that can help move goods from point A to point B? And at the end of the day, I, I think a lot of people wanna talk aesthetics. They wanna talk about driver experience, which I value immensely. But at the end of the day, for these logistics companies that are moving freight, from point A to point B, the question becomes, how can they seek out these new technologies and maintain that bottom line or even potentially augment that bottom line in a positive capacity? And that, my friends, is actually why I'm invested in this company. And hopefully that can provide some clarity for you guys through all the noise on both the bear and the bull case for this company in understanding the simplistic nature of this. And when you start to look at it and say, okay, Ryan says from point A to point B, I get it. How is it that they can do that? Well, they can move from point A to point B at ranges comparable to diesel. Okay, check. They're meeting the green initiative by reducing greenhouse gas emissions with the solution, providing these logistics companies a way to um, retract from their dependence upon fossil fuels going forward, check. Potentially uh, increasing the driver experience and focusing on those areas of the truck for improvement without rethinking the entire uh, truck in and of itself. Now, when you cross compare with the industry uh, competitors out there, I think you'll quickly find that the range is not there. The driver experience is not there. The aesthetics are not there, okay? The mechanics network and being able to integrate the solution into existing fleets with the existing networks of repair facilities is not there. The amount of downtime that is uh, incurred by some of the new technology with regard to their downtime and the charging time necessary uh, to uh, incur, to take on some of these new technologies 
Uh, and finally, the range just is not comparable to what they can get with diesel. And right now, unless those bottom line benefits can be improved upon with the new technology and at least come up to par, guys, they will not be mentioned in the discussion at all. Logistics fleets are not going to change. Okay, they're not going to change on their own accord. And I think Hylion is the only one without government incentives, without state mandated uh, incentives, which we know are coming down the pike to help really influence these fleets along to at least take a hard look at these solutions. I think you'll find that Hylion is standalone when compared to these other solutions out there that in my assessment, and I try to be as neutral as I possibly can, do not hold a candle to what Hylion brings to the table with regard to at least meeting what is currently the status quo with a class eight space that is dominated by fossil fuels at this particular juncture. Some things that I want to suggest maybe that we keep an eye on here on the next uh, quarterly earnings call here coming up is I think we need to continue to uh, monitor the revenue growth. That's the top end revenue. We're not going to uh, see bottom line profit for, for a while here, but that real break even is going to be when we feel like those orders are coming in with such a frequency um, that we can project getting to that critical mass break even order point and 5,000 is the simplistic. And, you know, I read articles that are scathing on the companies and they was none of this is discussed in that the implication going forward is that they will garner zero zero based on past performance and i think that's a short-sighted approach I, I think it could be a costly one um and i think if this company in that march toward that break even critical mass five thousand order units starts to turn out um, some level of snowball effect or interest in uh industry which i'm already seeing it's just that the secret has not got out yet in that if Hylion can deliver some of those bottom line uh, benefits to uh, payload capacity, uh, driver experience, uh, the ability to go green without uh, surrendering uh, all of what the industry has grown to love about the trucks that they've actually driven for many, many decades. And then finally, the, the actual range anxiety once the industry understands that they can go from point A to point B, I think the sky's the limit for this company. And we're in a position now where we've got a few orders on the books right now to help augment their way to that critical mass break even point. But it's going to be somewhere along the lines there where this thing really does shift in sentiment and we can have some articulate, articulatable metrics to take a look at and say, we can forecast with some certainty the, that they will be at that uh, break even critical mass. And we can start to forecast perhaps maybe even beyond that point uh, as we look to penetrate the North American market to start. And I think over the coming three to five years, that's really going to be the transition. And I think what really gets short-sighted is we're looking at the stock in the acute now we're looking at the company and suggesting perhaps maybe that they made promises that they did not keep. You can look at it however you want to, okay? I think in the future, reflecting back on this moment, this very impasse at $3.50 a share, is it really going to matter? Those observations, those articles will drown away. Those articles will go away. And the new flood of momentum will pick up as the short interest does continue to roll off. Revenues increase as we march toward that bottom line profit and look to march toward that critical mass break even of units sold with the assistance of the OEMs. Right now, it's Peterbilt, owned by PACCAR, one of the major players in the space. These are some of the metrics that I'm looking at going forward. We need to continue to build out the order books and solidify that going forward. Each new block of orders only lends itself to that end of that critical mass break-even point where we march toward being able to be self-sustaining in this company. People are going to look at it now. They're going to look at the cash burn at $135 million of sustaining cost uh, going forward for the company. And when you look at the order book right now, the two just do not jive. So 
Hylion has got to, at some point, realize what it is that they're looking to do, and that is be a leader in the Class 8 space. And if you look at the metrics of what these guys bring to the table, think about when they can make that uh, available to the marketplace once certified and once available for mass scale and production, that it's the, the, the sentiment is going to shift in that it will no longer be a company that doesn't have a ready product. It has two ready products ready for shipment and ready for delivery to the fleets after their validation phase is complete. And I think that's going to be an amazing piece. I think the market is too large here not to make that. I think we're going to look at this 5,000 orders as the break even as being a laughable metric as of now, but a critical one. That's why I focus on it now, having the orders on the books that we've had evolving to this very stage, setting ourselves up for what eventually could be the small pieces that Hylion is putting in place with regard to their uh, hiring their talent, the Innovation Council, the Board of Directors, their relationships with the OEMs and potentially winning new OEM relationships through uh, the very customers uh, that they are winning orders from right now. It is all a big, big tide that is slowly raising. And once these things have an opportunity to really complement each other, it's going to be very, very apparent why Hylion has built the framework that they have up to this point to deliver on these promises down the line, because their goal has not changed. Their goal of electrifying the Class 8 space has not changed. Their vision on how they are going about looking to do that has not changed, okay? The correlation between Hylion and Nikola and Hyzon at this point is worth noting. The correlation between the stock action day to day, the charts follow exactly with each other. I find that's a real uh, problem. And I think Hylion needs to do everything they can do to remain on their track to define themselves and separate themselves from the pack as we move forward into realizing Hylion's vision for the future, which is drastically different than the competition. So we'll continue to uh, monitor hirings. We will continue to monitor uh, the new orders as they come in. I've said this many, many times, the X factor with Hylion, there's going to be two. One is going to be the surprises that are rendered. Um, I cannot come on and do a weekly update on Hylion uh, and forecast uh, the many things that Hylion has going on behind the scenes. Now, you can say, Ryan, they don't have anything. If that's your presumption, you are entitled to those presumptions at this point. It's no problem. Um, I, on the other hand, uh, I assume that those things are going on based on the renderings that come through, like the Northwest Christensen fueling news that we got this, uh, this week, these news pieces that are trickled down about new interests that are garnered by companies that I had no idea or no uh, insight at all, wholesome, really was out of left field. So expect more of those catalysts going forward, because as this industry grumbles and it starts to look at Hylion, they are going to have to flip and be able to receive those orders because I think they're going to have so much interest coming in the door that it's not going to be a question of selling orders rather than accepting new orders and how they can effectively fill those orders going forward. So these are the things that I'm looking at here with regard to the X factor going forward, the unexpected Expect the unexpected with this company because there is enough interest out there in the fleets. Hylion has the solution. And as we march toward that availability, things are really going to step up. They're really going to ramp up. They're going to get interesting. The stock is going to move, guys. I'm, I'm telling you the inevitable here. And the best way to prepare for that stuff is before it happens mentally. Get yourself prepared right now to have yourself ready and, 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 and have those questions answered for yourself before they happen so they don't surprise you, you don't act on emotion, you don't sell prematurely, because I tell you what, just like the exacerbated downside selling and pressure that we've seen over the last uh, couple of years, it's the same to the upside. And you're going to have that same pressure to the upside to potentially sell, exit the stock, buy more, whatever it is. The solution for you, I'm going to make as simple as possible. If you're interested in the opportunity, 
buy the shares. If you are not, don't buy the shares. It's that simple. The only solution is to hold this because I, I'm telling you, I've monitored this stock every single day for the last two years. And I'm going to say with 100% certainty, and this is coming from me, this is not a Seeking Alpha article, this is coming from me. It would be absolutely impossible to try to time, to try to manipulate, to try to buy low and sell high with this company. The only solution to make sure that you're going to catch the bottom and also catch the top is to buy and own the shares into the future. That's it. Become an investor in this opportunity. That is going to be the key to capturing the greatest amount of wealth that this opportunity, the best investment opportunity that I've seen in the last 10 years in the stock market is presented right here on this opportunity that I roll out every single week. And it's going to come become more fortified as the coming months roll out and the opportunities continues to surprise as this company continues to deliver on its very, very simple message to electrify the class eight space. And they believe that they've got the solution. I tend to agree with them. This will be the last installment that I have on Highly On here in Virginia. Again, we'll be moving, we'll re-engage in my new studio. I just wanna take this opportunity to thank the Discord group. Thank you for providing all of your continued dialogue on this opportunity. The opportunity for would-be investors is out there. It just takes you to seek it out, to find it. And it is uh, with no short order, the hard work that goes into providing that information, both on Facebook with the groups that uh, are uh, always hungry and always scouring the landscape out there, uh, and also finally for the team with Hylion for building up to where we are now. I want to encourage all investors to look toward the horizon rather than look back on this opportunity. Guys, stock market investing is unlike any other activity. A lot of people try to put rationale over it. Sometimes the most irrational of opportunities can provide the very opportunity that very few people out there will see. I believe we're going through this right now because I'm, I'm, I'm basically one of the few voices that are providing uh, a, a second look on this company and saying, yeah, it's been a rough past, but perhaps maybe to judge it holistically is probably a better, um, a, a better judge of where this uh, company could end up into the future. And, and I think for people who really take an objective look at this, I think they're going to find that uh, they see the same things that I and a lot of people in this very devoted community see. And when this thing starts to move up, I think you're going to find a lot of sticky hands are not willing to part with their shares because they understand the opportunity going forward. Once we get to that critical mass uh, break even from year over year to see this company penetrate the North American market and then go global is going to be a moneymaker like we've never seen before. I think it's the opportunity of a lifetime. I've said this many times. I will continue to roll out this product and I will continue to track the progress intimately on this opportunity as it unfolds, more importantly, into the future, as opposed to what has happened in the past over the last two short years with the evolution of this company. Guys, if you appreciate the information, want to subscribe to the message, leave your comments at the bottom of this video. Uh, strike up a dialogue. If I've missed anything, please share it uh, in the information. The whole idea here is to continue the churn, continue to use social media uh, as a tool to provide the most updated information, unique commentary on Hylion, as opposed to those jaded perspectives that are either always on one side or the other on the fence. I try to come out and I try to pierce through that. And I try to share the information based on what is known, what is known and what it could mean for you into the future. Profits are made in the future, not the past. Profits are made in the future, not the past. Don't ever, ever forget that. No matter what you hear on the landscape, it only matters what this company does into the future, not what it's done in the past. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.